Hi guys and welcome to my review of the QOA Aviation. QOA, Queen of Audio, is a sister company to Kinera uh, and uh, also Celeste makes up, that, makes up uh, that group of three companies, uh, each one of them having a slightly different, um, uh, let's say, focuses. But overall, um, you know, they all have the, very much the same design in, when it comes to appearance and look and, and uh, you know, the faultless build quality is one thing which is common in all those three brands. Celeste probably is the one that, because it's more budget orientated, uh, you will notice that the build quality is slightly less um, exclusive. But when it comes to QOA or Canera, you know, if there's one thing that you cannot fault uh, with those two brands is how beautiful the IEMs look. I mean, one, one obviously uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but you know the Nana, uh, the, the 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 Loki, um, the Baldar, um, uh, the Wood, uh, all IEMs which are beautiful. And the Aviation is no different. The Aviation is a stunning IEM. Anyway, this is the box of the Aviation. Uh, what is the Aviation? The Aviation is a one plus three. Uh, so it uh, sports a, um, a custom in-house made uh, eight millimeter driver, dynamic driver, and then three Knowles drivers. Okay, the box opens up this way. We get some some paperwork here, some cards with some QR codes, and then another card here with a few more uh, instructions with regards to the usage and uh, some specs and uh, the graph that it has. Uh, 30, 39 ohm impedance, 118 dBs sensitivity, and, and the truth is it does get pretty loud. Um, over how the how is everything then distributed? The IMs came sitting over there. You lifted this out, and over in that corner there we had that little box that you see there on the right, which has the tips, which I'll show it to you now in a second. Um, over here we have the two the terminations for the modular cable, 4.4 and the 3.5, and then the actual box with the tips, nice attention to detail there, nice tips. I used this, the medium size top tips for quite a while and then I changed over to the uh, Tangzhu Sankai which I just, it, it just gave me that little extra that I was looking for. That was basically, it's not a, a dramatic difference but it, it gave me that little extra and that little extra was, mm, uh, well I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Anyway, this is the box, beautiful presentation, nothing to be said, honestly. I didn't expect anything as well uh, uh, other than, than that the need to be this good. As for the IEM itself, oh, sorry, one, this one second before I move on. This is the case, a little bit on the larger size. I mean, uh, if we are going to compare it here with the Kara's case, which already is a big case, this is this is pretty big. But anyway, it's a nice case. You have ample space. You know that your IEM will fit inside there. No issues with maybe some extra tips that you might want. Uh, you know, the cable will fit in nicely. You might even be able to fit in your little portable dongle deck amp if you have one like I do so you know it's big yes but it's got plenty of space and it's nice and sturdy as well and looks the part okay as for the aviation itself uh, stock cable very nice cable I really wouldn't so uh, I really don't see any need to swap it out uh, I, you know go, those of you that follow me know that I like follow and um, like measuring it and so on and and the, ca the cable you know measured adequately there's nothing wrong with it it's modular you know and and so why spend more money if it's not if it wasn't a good cable I'd say so but it's it's a decent cable. As for the aviation itself, the IEM, it's a beautiful resin, three um, D printed resin shell. Beautiful. The faceplate, I mean honestly, I'm trying to see if I can focus it here. The faceplate is beautiful. I mean it, it really doesn't do it any justice showing it to you here on on uh, on the uh, video. It it is a very very nicely designed um, faceplate. The shape of it is a conventional shape to a certain extent. There's nothing unusual about the shape, but it fits flawlessly, at least in my ears. I've got no complaints. I was able to fit it nice and deep. Got really nice seal with the with the with the, the, the tangs with tips. Uh, it's not a heavy IEM, so it's not going to cause any fatigue. It didn't cause me. I mean, you put it on, you know, uh, the, the even the curvature that the cable has is nice and doesn't kind of want to pull out the IEM or something of the sort, which sometimes is the case. And it's, you know, it's pretty pretty uh, docile in its uh, strength. It's not like some of the cables that you sometimes get, which are really tough. So it's it's a nice looking IEM. It's well built, it's well put together. Very typical Chimera philosophy, uh, you know, so I, I'm not really surprised. There are no surprises. Um, as for sound, which is what you want to know, how does the um, aviation stack up and how does it uh, then compare with some IEMs priced at around the same value? This is a $199 uh, IEM. This particular unit, I want to thank 
uh, high five go for having uh, made it uh, possible to, to to get it um so it is uh, you know it is a nicely uh, it's a it's a nicely priced im f in terms of its appearance uh, what you get in terms of uh, uh, you know um, uh, accessories everything within that aspect is as you would expect for a 200 dollar im I've selected a few IMs, yeah, and I could have selected a few more. I mean, those which will be more savvy will probably straight away notice I don't have the Performer 5 here. And the only reason why I don't have the Performer 5 is not because it's not capable of being here, it's more than capable, but because I wanted to kind of have the newer or more unusual IMs here to compare and some older ones that maybe have gotten kind of not enough love, all right? So, with regards to that, I've got here the, the, the Jazir 41T, which, uh, you know, uh, it, it was kind of a, um, a little bit of a, of a surprise because it came out of nowhere. Nobody was expecting it to be such a competitively, com, com, such a competent uh, little IM, especially when it was priced initially at $139. Uh, it's now around $160. Um, it's got some Sonian BAs inside there as well. 10 millimeter dynamic driver. It's got a very smooth sound. Um, some people uh, complained. Beautiful cable. This is the stock cable, by the way. Okay. Um, some people complained that it was a little bit on the on the bright side. I personally never found it bright. Um, but again, I, that's just me. Um, I actually found it very smooth. Um, you know, very 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 easy to listen to. Next to it. Tenstrom Kara, uh, it's got uh, some uh, Sonian BAs on the mids, 10 millimeter dynamic driver, uh, and it's, it's a, actually a one plus four, and then it's got some custom um, BAs for the highs. Um, it's got uh, a, a, the more unusual tuning out of all of these IEMs in the sense that it's got that kind of uh, very sub bass focused uh, lower frequency that instead of gliding into the mids, it just tucks and then you have uh, a continuation uh, you know, along the mid bass and the mids and then you start having the, 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 the natural pin again into the, into the rest of the mids, upper mids and then treble. So it's got a, a, a slightly different curve to the, to the rest of the IMs right here. But um, nonetheless, it's, it's well done. It's a it's, uh, very nice sounding IM, very nice sounding IM. Um, I don't think it's really been getting enough of attention uh, and it's a pity because you know once you have uh, found the proper tip which is something which you always have to do for any IEM and uh, you know you've maybe messed around with some cables and you found the cable that uh, tickles your fancy uh, trust me it is a very competent sounding IEM if there's a flaw that I have to put on it it's maybe that um, uh, in terms of its built the shell could have been something nicer I mean the Jazir has got a full resin shell this shell looks absolutely stunning okay so they could have maybe done a little bit better with regards to the build especially you know being Tanstrom and, and, and Tanstrom uh, has gotten us used to a certain level of quality of, of their higher end products let's put it that way um, and, and sonically, if there is anything that I would maybe point is, I would have liked the bass to have been just a little bit more, uh, it could maintain the tuning that it's got, but a little bit more assertive, a little bit more, uh, it, 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 the tuning, uh, um, I think to a certain extent, um, helps uh, the driver out in camouflaging its minor deficiency in being as competent as it could be that's my personal opinion okay and um, on the opposite side yeah i've got the audio sense aq4 which is again an im that very much very very much went under the radar one plus three priced at 100 roughly 170 dollars um, um very nice im honestly uh, some people complained about it being very bass heavy uh, i didn't find it bass heavy yes it is when compared to some of these, a little bit warmer sounding, that's uh, undeniable. But the balance that's being struck here, I find it at least very entertaining. And although it might lose a little bit to some of the more detailed ones here, in terms of its detailed retrieval and so on, it's never anything too dramatic. It's, it's a nicely solid, tu solidly tuned IM that personally I even think is more competent than the AQ7, its bigger brother. So the AQ4 for me is a better sounding IM overall than the AQ7. The AQ7 um, 
great mids, great highs, but once you crank it, they just lose their composure, and the bass, uh, the bass leaves 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 a lot to be desired. The, the bass on on the AQ7 should be the bass that's here on the AQ4, and it isn't. Uh, and then uh, the other one that I've got here for us is the C Audio Yume 2, and the, out of all the Yumes, it's the best Yume. Period. Uh, the combination of the drivers that they've used, yeah, OnePlus 2, so um, a Sonyan for the mids, um, a Custom for the highs, uh, which I believe is a Knowles, and then um, the, the dynamic driver. The, the combination of the three drivers um, is, is faultless. Uh, and actually, uh, although it's the simplest combination, it's uh, probably the most competent. Um, I mean, this is one plus four, one plus four, one plus three, one plus two, one plus three, uh, which goes a long way to say that you know the the number of drivers is not uh, always entirely the the maker or break it. And then finally, of course, the, the aviation. Um, okay, sound. What is the sound of the aviation like? The sound of the aviation is a a a, a sound which focuses itself on so the mids within the bass and the highs complementing it on either side. Um, with regards to the highs, and I'll get the highs out of the way straight away, the highs uh, are adequate until you start you know, pushing a little bit more the volume and then they can become, they lose their composure, they lose their ability to be um, as resolving, okay? They start uh, having a hard time um, kind of uh, maintaining their, their cleanliness and with all of that, they have a slight tendency of becoming a little bit harsh. That can be, um, uh, let's say, uh, tamed or count, you know, um, um, uh, uh, surpassed if you choose carefully your your source. And with regards to sources, I tried three different combinations: my topping A50s with the M15, the the Venture Electronics uh, Prime Deck with the 2RA, and then the the, the, the NX7 with the Cayenne RU7. That combination is for me the best combination for this because it's the combination that, due to its smoothness, um, helps then control. The, a little bit more that uh, lack of polish that starts happening at certain points with regards to the upper mids and the, and the treble on the on the aviation and also adds a little bit of um, cleanliness and uh, to the uh, how can i explain this um, this has got nice space it's got really nice space no, no issues there but that there just adds a little bit of flavor to that base to make it just a little bit more silky let's put it that way all right um, touching on the bass, it's exactly what I just said. The bass, um, it could be a more detailed bass, but it's 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 not that that um, I find is uh, the the issue. For some reason, and depending on the song, uh, it is a bass that can have a certain amount of of, of uh, dynamic to it. Dynamic, you know, uh, the lady is not amused uh, by Jeff Cascaro, for example. Um, it's got that initial drum hit. It can be, uh, or it can do that uh, quite nicely if you have, you know, the, a little bit of volume. If the volume is lower, you don't really feel it. It kind of gets too tamed down, so it lacks that that incisiveness that that song has. Um, but then, if the the passage that you're hearing is a little bit too complicated and it's got too much going on, then it shows a little bit of a, of a it, it shows a little bit it has in, it's having a hard time in resolving all of that. Um, so if it's a simpler track, yes, it can you know very much uh, handle it quite well, and I find that it does better if you actually give it a little bit more power. Okay, and but if it's a more complex track in terms of the bass, it gets a little bit not confused it just uh, struggles to maintain its composure and resolve everything nicely okay but this these are uh, like I said these are really not deal breakers these are little minor nitpicks that I personally uh, found that with a better tip choice and choosing my my source carefully I resolved it for example the VE connected to the aviation is a no-go uh, for some reason, which I just don't understand, the VE sounds very good with the other IEMs. Uh, with the AQ4, truth be told, it wasn't taking the, it wasn't extracting the best out of the AQ4. But with the aviation, it just shuts it down. It just makes the aviation come across very dark sounding. And the aviation is not a dark sounding IEM. Okay, it's not a bright sounding IEM. It's, a, it's got a, I would call it, 
I would call it a, a neutralish, semi-bright signature, let's put it that way, uh, with the only real problem that you have in, in, the, in the signature, let's say, when you look at the graph, is that area there of 6.5 to 9K, uh, which is a little bit more energetic. But if you choose your tips carefully, and in that aspect, the, the, like I said before, the tanks were helped out, and if you choose your source carefully, that won't be an issue. With the Prime and the R2RA here, it just shut it down completely. I mean, it, it, it just took away too much of that energy um, that it is there present because, I mean, I tried it with two other units, I tried it with a few other uh, dongles as well, and, and, so, and, 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 and Bluetooth the, uh, dongle, and it, it's there. So um, uh, it's, it's something on, on I'm, I believe it will probably be something in terms of the impedance matching of the amplifier to the actual IEM, which again, shouldn't be really an issue because this is supposedly 39 ohms. So if you use the 1.8 rule, it should be, you know, well, well within the capabilities of the 2RA. Um, and the topping with the M15 on here as well, very nice. The only issue or the only thing or the only reason why that that, that combination is not on, on, on in first place with the, the combination of the NX7 and the Cayenne uh, uh, is just because that there is a brighter sounding uh, combination uh, and that area there that I mentioned between the six and a half to 9k can over there just be a little bit overemphasized um, but other than that flawless plenty power you know gives great texture to the to the whole uh, music reproduction it uh, fantastic fantastic as well um, so there you have it you know mids are, are probably the best Thing of the aviation, um, male and female vocals, all fine. Although, although uh, they, on some occasions, sound a little recessed. Okay, but again, I'm, I don't consider it to be um, uh, a deal breaker. Honestly, I really don't. Um, um, I heard some people actually considering the, the the aviation more of a V signature. I I didn't find it more. Of, I didn't find it to be a V signature. Like I said, neutrally with a slight brightness. On, on the on the upper mids and treble and a little bit of a bass emphasis but the bass is not as uh, it's not as emphasized as what the graph would lead you to believe because I mean when you compare for example these two in terms of the graph they look identical and the bass here on the on the Yume is far superior not only in terms of its actual uh, energy uh, but in terms of the, the the quickness in terms of the the snappiness the the, the volume the the everything it's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a superior bass period i mean uh, there's nothing wrong with this one but this one has got a better bass <laughs> that's the reality um okay so compared now quickly to the um, ims i've selected you know all of these ims are good L let's be frank here all of these ims are good um, which are the ones I personally gravitate towards the most, or which is the one that I gravitate the most? Uh, I would probably say the Yume, okay? And after the Yume, I would say the Kara. Um, yes, these two are probably the ones that I will go and pick up more often if I, when, I, when, I, and when I was actually listening, in, which we, those two were the first that came to mind. Um, the Jazir and the, uh, um, the AQ4 came in second uh, with me again maybe preferring the AQ4 a uh, few extra more times than I did the, the, the Zier but the reality is like I said in the beginning they are all really really good IEMs there's not a, a, an IEM here that doesn't do what it was proposed to do well they all or you know, or doing what they were designed to do very well. So it's 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 a little bit hard for me to now say, oh no, the aviation is not competent. No, the aviation. Uh, I think the best way to 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 finally describe it or to to give a, a summary on it, it is a safe tuned IM. Um, it's it's been tuned in a way to not have anything be overly done um, and have also nothing nothing underdone. Uh, so it's a safe tune. It does everything pretty decently. It, it pleases, it will please I think the vast majority of people. Um, it's pretty versatile in the genres of music that it uh, that I played through it. Although, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I would say that music that is not very, uh, very, that hasn't got a lot of stuff going on, it's the music that the aviation feels more, most comfortable with. Um, it needs 
a, a nice source in terms of it being a slightly warmer sounding source okay slightly warmer sounding source just to control a little bit more the, those upper mids and treble um, but that doesn't mean that maybe you won't enjoy it with something like the M15 or, or a brighter sign, sounding source um, and even with the 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 the, the, the VE, I'm, I'm sure that there will probably be people that will like the combination. I'm just saying that my experience with the VE and and the and the aviation wasn't a good one. This wasn't a good match, and, and that's absolutely normal. I mean, not every IEM has to be a perfect match. So it's a safely tuned IEM that you know, it's two hundred dollars. Yes, it's got ample accessories. It's well built. It's well accessorized. But at two hundred dollars, obviously. Uh, you you wanted to have something which is an absolute standout feature that will uh, you know make you gravitate towards it and choose it over the other ones here um ultimately ultimately if i have to really kind of um be uh, more more if i'm trying to find yeah, a position to better place it i would probably say that yes it will ultimately be a more um uh, satisfying m than the Jazeer, uh, um, in the sense that the Jazeer is probably way too safe and this has got a little bit more uh, guts going to it, so probably it would be ahead of the Jazeer. With regards to the AQ4, um, the AQ4 probably uh, will lose, uh, for some will lose, because it's got uh, uh, maybe an overly emphasized bass and, and will detract from the more audiophile experience, so in that aspect, this will probably slightly edge it so it's very i mean very small differences here uh, and then with regards to the kara and the um, the, um, the the yume with regards to the kara um, it yes it beats the kara unquestionably in terms of the build quality and that's that's not even an issue there in terms of the overall accessories very much very much evenly matched in terms of sound um, they all too different to really be you know be comparing them in a fair manner um i think ultimately ultimately i don't know th this is a this is a tough one i think ultimately I i'd go for the cutter that's me personally me personally okay um although the cutter does have that issue with the bass like i mentioned and this one does have a little bit more mid bass uh, slam uh, by comparison uh, i still think the cutter is more my my flavor uh, with regards to the humor i prefer the humor i mean uh, uh, this is not me wanting to be in any way bad with regards to the aviation but the yume is for me a better im it's uh, it's build quality is as good it's uh, accessories package is as as decent as the accessories package provided by qoa um it, it's slightly cheaper uh, and it, it just sounds fantastic i mean uh, when i was listening to it it was very obvious first of all like i mentioned the the the, the base in terms of its impact and dynamics it's 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 a step above okay uh, and it has nothing to do with the fact that that's a 10 and this is an eight millimeter yes size does matter but i've seen plenty eight millimeters be pretty amazing i mean you just have to look at the example of the of the of the selects the celeste the phoenix core that's got a seven millimeter driver and it's absolutely unreal or you look at the eight millimeter for example of the urd uh, the canera urd uh, unreal driver so it has nothing to do with the actual size of the driver it's just the quality of the driver and the way that they've been tuned over there it's, it's just fantastic um, and then the other thing that comes or jumps to you as well once you start listening to it a little bit especially in the more complex passages is that the cleanliness of the upper mids and the treble in the Yume is faultless it's got that little extra twinkly and sparkly that's ever so detailed ever so cleaner than on the aviation and it edges it out again in that aspect so it's got three aspects where it's edging it out uh, well two aspects the sound at, at the both extremes of the spectrum is just ever so more, uh, you know, uh, polished, more classy, more well done, more refined, um, uh, and the build quality. I mean, okay, fault, fine, uh, metal resin. You can argue here, you know, but uh, the build the build quality of the of the Yuma is uh, once again uh, a, a very strong point that it's got for it. Together with the price, I mean, we're talking about a, a roughly a, a twenty odd dollar price difference between the two. Not a not a huge amount of money, but it's still twenty dollars. Anyway, guys, I'll show you now the graphs and uh, we'll wrap it up. All right, you take it now. 
Hi guys and welcome now to the uh, graph section for the QA Aviation. Let me just do away with some of these graphs here so we can see things a little bit cleaner. Okay, so this graph that I've got here in front of us now is the QA. Um, everything sits within a window of 71 to 78. So, um, seven eight dbs of pin again to the base which i guess some people would consider that as a v-shape i didn't uh, perceive it to be uh, v-shaped especially because a lot of that energy is below 100 hertz so uh, it although it's got decent enough mid base it's it's not as prominent as what the graph would lead you to believe and and i'll show you now what i mean in a second and then we have also from 71 to roughly 80 90 db gain into the mids peaks at about uh, three small little dip where it comes up again again another dip and then this peak here this area uh, between like six and a half roughly and uh, nine ish uh, it, it, this is already with the um, um, food uh, with the, uh, the the tip the 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 tang the tangzu tips um, not the Fudu tips, I'm sorry, with the Tangzu, the Senkai tips, uh, which has brought it down because uh, with the stock tips, this is still got another 3 dBs on top, so it's a little higher. Um, and like this, okay, it, it sounds uh, controlled. Uh, with the little extra energy that it has in the stock format, um, uh, it, it, like I said, when you once you start cranking the volume, it can get you. All right, let me now just show you then some of the other IEMs. This first one that I'm going to show you is the Jazir, the 41, um, the 41T. Um, I've normalized everything at 500 hertz, and as you can see, the base kind of seems similar. Uh, but then, and also the way that the, the initial pin again and where it peaks, and a, a, lot, a lot of similarities up to here, as you can see. Uh, then, here is where the differences happen, and the, what you do notice straight away between the one and the other is that the, the, the 41T is more relaxed and doesn't have as much, um, as much uh, details up top as compared with the aviation. Um, and that's why, for example, I, I, I'm surprised when I hear, hear some people say that they find it to be a little bit too bright and so on, because I mean, if, if, if they found it to be too bright, then how, what would they say of the aviation, okay? Um, graphically, it's, it's a nice graph, as you can see, there's nothing offensive about the graph of the 41T. I mean, again, very much a, a sub-base focus, the, the, the base just glides and so on. Very, everything is just very relaxed, very unfatiguing. Um, Base-wise, very identical, the two of them. Um, really not much in it. Mids, again, very much identical. I think the matching of the two just makes, um, while in the aviation you, you might get sometimes that sensation of the mids being a little bit recessed, especially male vocals. Uh, over here that really doesn't happen. What you do notice, which is very easy, is how uh, it is not as detailed up top the 41T as compared to the uh, um, aviation. And for that, aspect, for that main aspect there, I think um, the aviation beats the 41T over that. Uh, and, and come out on top of that. But it's not a huge difference, mind you, okay? Um, compared now with the, um, where is the, there we are, the audio sense, the AQ4, um, again, normalized at 500 hertz. Um, what you do notice very much is that the base of the AQ4 is significantly more prominent and if I for example instead of normally as it, normalizing it at 500 if I was normal if I was to normalize it at 1 kilohertz okay um, this would probably be the, the more correct way of assess of comparing of comparing the two of them um, because you do notice the base of the IQ4 is significantly uh, more, 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 more there. Uh, obviously, that doesn't let then the mids shine as well as they could, uh, because when you look at just the mids of the IQ4, they're faultless. I mean, you know, the, the thing is that you have you have this area below 100 hertz, at least a good solid 4 dBs, three, three to 4 dBs above uh, a significant part of the of the of the um, upper mids and treble which then will make it sound a little bit darker um but you know once again it, it's uh, 
I think the base yeah is probably the thing that will deter some people although it didn't deter me uh, I, th I thought it was very well executed and very well put together all right so that's the AQ4 now I'm going to show you the test Jankara okay that's the test Jankara day once again normalized at 500 Hertz um, you notice yes that the car has got uh, more sub bass but then you notice that it's not as mid bass um, friendly let's put it that way as the aviation uh, the aviation just seems to edge it out slightly in the mid bass and i think it has to do with this um, a little bit of a dip that you get here as well in the lower mids of the cutter then the rest is very similar i mean the way it, the gain is the pin again is done in the mids and how it picks it around three all of this is very very similar um, I, I personally just gravitate more towards the sound of the of the cara, even though, like I mentioned before, the, the bass of the cara, I would have liked it to be a little bit more uh, higher quality, maybe the driver be a better quality driver, um, but the mids and the highs of the cara, I think, are really, really well, very well done, very well done. Uh, and then, finally, so the Tanstrom cara is done, Jazeer. Finally, where is it? Here we go. The 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 C Audio Yume Two, uh, and you know, again, uh, normalized at five hundred hertz. Uh, you would say, oh, okay, the aviation's got just about the same bass, uh, and the mids and the highs and everything is going to be very much the same thing. Uh, no, trust me. Um, uh, Ten millimeter versus eight millimeter. Although they've got a similar tuning, the 10 millimeter driver of the Yume is just faultless, faultless. It's got m more speed, more texture. Um, it, it's just better. It, it is just better. Um, and then the mids again, very well executed. And if you consider this, just two BAs doing that whole, you know, this whole area here, very well done. They don't. They very detailed, very clean. They don't. Uh, they don't uh, spill over. They don't. Um, they don't uh, lose their composure. You know, uh, tonally very correct. Um, actually, with regards to tone, and t t I didn't mention that during the review earlier. Um, I think the best quality of the aviation is its timbre and its tonality. Uh, with regards to the rest of the of the technicalities, the soundstage, a little bit on the closed side. Uh, you know, if, especially when you compare it to the Yume 2, the soundstage of the Yume 2 is significantly better. Imaging, um, it's it's okay. It's got an acceptable imaging. It's pretty decent. Uh, and detailed retrieval, yes, very good. So I think the detailed retrieval uh, and then the timbre and the tonality are probably the two better technicalities of the of the um, aviation while soundstage and imaging are a little bit behind um, and that's it guys i mean uh, you know it's a solid iem i, I really think it, it, it uh, you know qa did they did they work uh, well they opted for a more safer more you know more sensible approach without having anything stand out uh, you know in any pe uh, you know peculiar manner um, and it's a safe tune it, it's basically it's that it's a safe tune it will please i think the majority of people um, my only recommendation is just choose uh, your source you know wisely and make sure that you obviously you play around with tips a little bit but that is something that we always do. It's, there's nothing new. It's not the. It's not now the aviation that is tip sensitive. Every IEM is tip sensitive. What sounds amazing to me might sound like absolute total garbage to you, and vice versa. So play around with the tips. Make sure you find a tip that works for you the best. Okay. Anyway, guys, as always, like and subscribe. Any questions you might have, please feel free to ask me. All right. You take care now. Bye bye.